Ah, there we go. And if you turn the knob, this increases the voltage or decreases it. Hi there. If you are like me, you may have started um, recently to uh, experiment with electricals and stuff like that. And more often than not, you find yourself in a situation where you need some kind of power source, maybe 12 volts for LEDs or 9 volts for some kind of motor, 7.2, whatever. So what you're going to need for that is a thing like that. Just, you know, just a wall adapter. Mine comes with 16.6 .6 volts. Maybe, you know, just one LED, a red one, for example. Some resistors for the LED. Um, you're going to need a switch, of course. One of these things, which is uh, just a, a voltage reader, basically. And one of these chips. I'll just, I'll link all these components in the uh, video description. So you don't have to search for them. And these... I mean, you can just salvage that from all electronics. This costs maybe 10, 10 euros or something like that. This is like 2, two euros. That's, this is well, and you know, switch is basically nothing. So this costs, if you have this and have resistors, about $10 or something. So it's very cheap. Yeah, so let's get started. Alright, so before we just start soldering stuff together, we'll have to plan this stuff. So let's just draw out what you're going to do. We have the adapter here. And, you know, out comes. In my case, this is just for my case, I've got 16 volts, 16.6 .6 volts positive, and we have the ground. And this will go into these two here in plus and in minus. This is inside, and we've got the out side which is then the regulated voltage where you just plug in your stuff and then as I said we have to measure the voltage with this little thing here which we're gonna do here in parallel of course and you know that's the most basic part of that but we want to have a switch in here and we of course put the switch in here I'll show to do that show how to do that later on and the LED and the problem is this thing runs at about 2 volts so we need some kind of voltage divider to step that 16.6 .6 volt down to 2 volts and so that this whole thing just doesn't blow up so it's something which is very crude to do here I want to fast then we've got the LED which just goes from here to runs runs basically like this and the other which just runs off this too and so it's yeah now we have to do some math to work out what kind of uh, resistor values we need. So we know that VLED is equal to VN times uh, R2 divided by R1 plus R2. And we have some values. We know, for example, that VLED is 2 volts. And we know that VN is equal to 16.6 .6 volts, in my case. Um, this is oh, it's 2 volts. Two. Now we have to work out um, what R1 is expressed in terms of R2. I'll just do that and see in a bit. Alright, here we are. We know that 7.3 times R2 is equal to R1. Okay, so we now got this relation here and we can just choose our resistor values and I'm just gonna use around 200 ohms which is kind of common when using with LEDs for R2 and that makes R1 1460 ohms which is quite convenient because I've got a 1 kilo ohm resistor and I've got 470 ohm resistors so we just need three resistors for that oh, sorry we need of course four resistors because we can use 100 plus 100 so now we have to start soldering all right sorry about that I forgot to press record I have now soldered this adapter to the in pins of 
oh, focus place the in pins of this chip here and two cables of course to the output and you know as usual negative is black and positive is red all right now i've got this uh, wire here cut down and we have to build in this switch here and I'm not too familiar with this switch so we're just gonna check how this works okay so we're just gonna check the continuity for this alright so these two are open circuit and if we switch this over they should yeah right cool so if you want to switch it we can just solder these two on these two cable ends onto these two pins. I'm just gonna do that now off camera and we'll be right back. Alright, so we've got it hooked up and let's just test. Oh wow, pretty much zero volts. Switch on, 16.678, whatever. All right, works, great. Let's now solder in the volt meter thing. Shouldn't be too much of a problem to just all right, here we are. Works quite well. It's definitely on there. Let's see whether it works. Whoops. Wow, that just blew right out. All right, got it. Interesting thing, actually. The thing wasn't even plugged in. So the little flash of light we saw there was probably some charge left in the capacitors or something. So I'm just gonna uh, plug it in. And... Huh. Cool. So the switch doesn't seem to work properly. Yeah, I'm just gonna change the switch out there. But you can see the uh, voltmeter thing definitely works. Alright, got the new switch installed and now it's working perfectly. And as you can see we have set this output voltage as 12 volts here, or 11.9, you know. And you can just regulate that with this little potentiometer here. Alright, here we are. We've got a uh, resistor R1 and R2, we've got the LED and some cables to or wires to connect it to this uh, in ports. I'll just solder everything up and I'll be right back. Alright here we are back and I've got it soldered up. I've got um, R1, R2 and then of course positive and negative lead and before we solder it on I'll just check whether the LED lights on. All right, works, cool. Now I can solder it on. All right, now it's soldered on, works. It's all dim for my taste. Maybe the resistors weren't perfect after all, um, but it definitely works. So yeah, let's proceed then. All right, to finish the electrical side of this project, I've just soldered on some female uh, cable ends from breadboards so we can just plug in the cables and yeah that's basically it now we have to build a box and make a turning knob for this potential map. right so this is how I want to, the box to look like like you've got, it's basically just a box with uh, this multimeter on here on the front and the positive and negative terminals and of course the turning knob so you can adjust the voltage. Um, so we have to lay out these uh, parts on basically one side of this box and then we can just get all the other me measurements from that.
All right, there's the box. It's about 13 by uh, nine centimeters wide. The actual measurements really don't mean too much. All right, there it is. It's just, you know, you can basically use any kind of saw you have to saw this thing out. It's just a rectangle. Now we have to lay down all the positions for the electrical stuff. All right, this is the front plate. Now for the rest of the box we'll just make three more of these plates, of course with all the, all, without all the holes and stuff, and then two bigger plates which are basically going to be the bottom and top plate. Here we are, all the plates sawn out, and you know if you want to you can just sand off the edges a little bit, straighten all the cuts. Alright, now we're going to glue all the pieces together. Right, so for the knob for turning the potentiometer here, I just got this little dowel here, I think it's like 10 millimeters, and drilled a hole in the middle here, so you can just glue it onto here, and then turn it from the outside. Now the next few steps definitely are optional, like you don't have to do them, but it definitely goes a long way to just paint these things. Um, so I've got some red here for the body and for the back plate, which I actually got some holes in for the screws later on and a little slot for the cable. And the front panel is going to be grey, like very bright grey and the turning knob is going to be black. Alright, here we are. Paint is dry as a bone. And we can now start to attach all the electricals to the back side of this panel. Yeah, now the back panel isn't too pretty, but well, you're not going to see it later on. All right, so we can start by uh, putting the LED in there and putting the voltage measurement thing in there as well. There it is. Cool. And of course it's backwards, so yeah, yeah, that's better. And this switch has to go in here as well. So, whoa. Alright, now we need some screws. I've got some very small screws, like these. You know, you find them in cheap plastic uh, toys, for example. You can just glue these in place, actually, but... I prefer to screw them. That's the last screw. Ah! Huh? Doesn't look too bad, does it? Okay. I think uh, I think I'll just put in a drop of glue there. And now we have to get this thing onto there, including the turning pin. Alright, this should do it. It's not visible, the screws aren't visible from the outside. And here's the pin. Here's the turning pin, should now just fit fine. Yeah, works just fine. Now I have to glue it in place. So just the slightest hint of a drop should already be enough. I don't want to glue the rotating pin to the potentiometer itself. Right, just to the to the knob. 
And you probably can't see a thing there, can you? Okay, this should suffice, I guess. And while this dries, we can just glue this, not glue this, screw this to the housing. So again, like screwing isn't really the only option here. You can glue this, but this makes it kind of impossible to get into this later on and repair something or some else as you can see cable management isn't my strong suit but it works I guess and now we can see why I cut this little slot in here it's for this cable like that and I'm just gonna screw that on and see you in a second all right here we are, the glue has cured and I've written some specs on there, of course, 0 to 15 volts DC. That definitely depends on the adapter you've got, because the the chip we, be, we used in there can only step down voltage. So the voltage this thing is able to supply can only be, it can, is the maximum this thing can uh, supply. Then of course the 0, 1 switch positive negative and then if you turn it this way this will increase the voltage i think i hope all right so let's plug that in and ah there we go and if you turn the knob this increases the voltage or decreases it and i've got some leds here an led strip and a motor and I think these two run on 12 volts DC. So I'm just going to put this into uh, 12 volts. Here we go. And then put in some leads. I've got positive here. And then this way around. The negative here. Alright. And then let's try to get this LED to light up. There we go. You see? This, you know, the contacts are a little bit bad because the LED strips are old, but it definitely works. Yep, you can even change the color, I think. Yeah, there we go. And of course, I just check, yeah, this motor can turn on this as well. There we go. You know, it's perfect to check these little things. And of course, we can just step that down to whatever we want 9 volts, 6, 5, whatever we want. Yeah. Right, cool. That worked. And thanks for watching. Take care.